Hello, my name is Stephen Bowles, and today I'm going to talk to you about Showflow Prompter. So this is a really exciting feature that we've uh, really built to address the fact that a lot of teams are using a larger uh, script, um, you know, with, with, with more than four or five words, but more like several hundred words. Uh, for their presenters on stage or for in the sports environment for their PA reads. And so finding the right place for where to put that in Showflow uh, can be a challenge. And so um, really Showflow Prompter is all about kind of merging the script and the rundown together in a new way. And we're really excited to show it to you. So if I was just to jump over into a show in Showflow, looking at more of a traditional corporate event set up here, We've got our rundown and we've got our different elements telling us what to do and what production notes and lights are doing. And we can kind of see here I've got a script column and we really don't even have a lot of content in this script column. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and just add a particular element to have a whole bunch of content in here. And if I was just to paste that in, we can kind of see quickly this just blows out your script. You know, just the row height in general just blows up here. Uh, and so finding the way for us to still allow for a full script, yet it not destroy your rundown is really what we're aiming to help out with. Uh, so I'm going to simply just hide this element for right now. And right now we see, whoop, there it is. It just kind of sunk it all up and it looks really, really nice. And so instead, if I am interested in that script, I have a couple of different options. I have my normal featured view. Um, which is always a good column to know about. That's always a good view to know about. And that's going to basically allow you to have more of your featured view. It's going to allow you to see your script uh, right here without necessarily it blowing up your script. But even better would be something called prompter view. And so prompter view is going to let you load that same script, but to really see it with a larger kind of view dedicated to more of a teleprompter type experience. So I'm going to go ahead and select on the left over here item 102. And there we go. We can kind of see uh, we loaded that script right here into more of a promptery type experience right out the gate. So let's kind of look around at what's going on here. I, on my left pane, just hovering over that, open up a left pane. And I can quickly see these are my different items. And you can notice with this little pill crow, it's a little paragraph icon, by selecting that, that's actually going to load the contents of that script column cell into my viewer here, right? So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to select item 102, and there we go. We have all of the content that you would have seen if you had that script column enabled, only I'm entirely focused on it here. On the right side, just hovering over this pane, that's going to open up some of my settings. And here we can quickly see that's where I chose script. So if I had chosen video, we would have any video content in here. If I had chosen audio, I would see any of the audio notes in here. Doesn't look like there is any. Let's go to one. Item 136. There we go. So naturally you can put anything you want in here, but it's designed for more of that script type experience. So selecting more of your script column is the way to go here and simply selecting the item of choice. Okay. In addition to that, I can also control this text size so I can make it a lot bigger. This is only impacting my view. This doesn't actually change the contents of the cell. So let me show it to you. We're in item 102, GS day one. Okay. So I'm going to go to a different user and I'm going to go to item 102, GS day one. And this is the content we're talking about. And so by me changing the content size here, I'm not impacting at all the content size here. Okay, swinging back over. Also, I can control the line height. I can increase my line height really to an absurd amount, or I can keep it sort of normal. And again, that's only dedicated for my view here. Down below, we have something called font weight. You can go between regular and bold. It's just going to make it pop. You have your read arrow for a prompter type experience. You can show or hide that. You can force caps right now. They're enabled. If I disable that, I'm actually getting what it would look like just kind of by itself, or I can force it to be caps. And lastly, I can do what's called mirror text. And if I enable that, that's actually going to flip it. So if anyone's ever using Showflow in more of a, a teleprompter rig on a camera, whether it's reflecting off of a piece of glass or in a presidential, you would want to be using things like mirror text. For the most part though, I think you can just disable that. Okay, so let's kind of talk about what we're looking at here. I can go in and out of edit mode of this cell or of this contents at any time, just by double clicking. Here I go, I'm in edit mode. 
I could simply come under here, hit two line returns. I could come up, say, toss to video. I could even make this particularly interesting with a highlight of yellow and maybe red text. And then I could space it out a little bit. And by simply hitting save, it is now saved. The way you can know that is if I actually went over to another view of the same contents, here we go. There it is. It says toss to video. And that's an important thing for you to know that that this is still just a cell call in a in a column in your rundown. So it's entirely collaborative just like everything already is. So if I came in here and I wanted to make an edit here, I could quickly come down. I could cut out an entire section. I could actually move this section below and move this section up. And then I could even just make it clear when we go look at it on the other side, make this text green. So as soon as I make that edit here, if I go back to my other view, I'm going to see those changes made here. So that's an important thing. It brings a lot of power in the, in the, in the realm of collaboration when it comes to scripts and your rundown. But you need to be mindful about that, obviously, as well, too, uh, if you're actually using it for a teleprompter. To that end, one of the greatest things about Showflow's prompter view is the fact that it's live and it keeps up to date. So let's talk about prompter view. If I simply come over here, I can hit full screen, switch to full screen mode, and now I'm in full screen mode. And by simply just hitting the space bar, I am now advancing forward just by automatically scrolling. You see how that works? And by hitting the down arrow, I'm going to go faster. And if I keep hitting the down arrow and keep hitting the down arrow and keep hitting the down arrow, I'm going to go even, even faster. So I can hit the space bar. I can hit shift space and I'll go in reverse. I can hit space again and I can go forward. I'm going to open up my right pane here. And by simply showing the up and down arrows, I can show you that I'm moving the scroll speed entirely. See how that works? And so we really designed this to be a seamless experience for you. You can quickly hit spacebar if you're in rehearsals, pop into edit mode, make a couple edits right there with the presenter looking at it in the downstage monitors. You could say pause for response. You know what? Give, give them some stage direction uh, if you wanted to. And then pick it right back up where you were and continue with rehearsals. So a lot of flexibility when it comes to that as well too. You can also simply just hit spacebar and you're done. And you're sort of paused on that. Okay, so let's say that you were on your way and scrolling down and you knew that you had a change you wanted to make but it's not a minute or two down in the script. Well, one of the great things about Showflow's collaborative real-time component is that let's just pretend you swing over here and you go in and you make that change. Let's say you add it in right here. You say, new change, you know, toss to video now. And you wanted to just really quickly kind of make sure that they knew about that. You could put that in, swing back over to our live edit uh, pass through mode, and you can see that that has already showed up. Ideally, I would have even gone a little bit further down um, to where it would have scrolled up. But the idea is that while you're in the middle of presenting, changes can happen below the view and by the time you scroll into it those changes will already apply lastly i just want to mention um, tracking so currently tracking uh, is off if i wanted to i could turn tracking on now you don't want to just do this obviously you only want to turn tracking on if you intentionally want to more likely you want to have control over which element you're in and you're not jerked from one item to another while you're in the middle of a prompting session but considering your situation if you feel like you feel comfortable turning tracking on maybe all you have is a couple of bullet points like speaker notes you can do that by simply hitting tracking on and that will do something really cool I'll, I'll take myself out of full screen mode just to make my point but if you can see here on the left by simply just hitting spacebar down I'm going to be loading the new contents into that element so you can see that I'm going to jump into item 104 and I've now loaded that contents. 105, and we've now loaded that contents. Look like there's no contents altogether. Item 106, loaded those contents in there. So it's really cool how you can basically bring um, the entire prompting experience and the script building experience right in line with your rundown to where if you're moving elements up or down, 
if you're changing the order of things, if you're adding rows before or after, your script stays tied to that element. No matter where you place it in your rundown, your script and all those changes have been tracked. That's just a little bit about prompt review. Again, if you have any questions uh, you know, or comments, just send them to us in this little blue chat. We love hearing from you. But I'm really pumped to see how this gets used in more of the corporate event setting uh, where you have presenters presenting on the stage and you could really use this uh, in the downstage monitors. But then it could also be used in the game uh, sports and game presentation side where you have a PA read who's interested in looking at his script or his PA read in a larger view, potentially even hitting the space bar and auto scrolling through his uh, PA read as he's reading it. So really it's got a good use case in all applications. All right, well, thanks again for taking a look at this with me. And if you have any questions, ping us. Other than that, have a great show and good luck.